I think if I tell you anything about this caper before the intro, it will pretty much just give it all away. But I'll ask you this. What would you do to get revenge on an ex? How far would you go to get back at the one who broke your heart? Welcome to Capers and Cocktails, a true crime podcast that doesn't take itself too seriously and gives you something to enjoy while you listen. The following content may be disturbing to some. Discretion is advised. If you're enjoying one of our themed cocktails, ensure you're of legal drinking age and have fun, but drink responsibly. Once upon a time in Chicago, Jennifer Fitzgerald found herself in a perplexing predicament. A few years earlier, she had been dating Brandon Prevost. She and Brandon dated for several years and had a daughter named Zoe together. In early 2008, Brandon bought a purple 1999 Chevy Monte Carlo for $600 from Jennifer's Uncle Patrick, using his 2007 income tax refund. It ended up registered in Jennifer's name, but it was a car that Brandon was going to drive. He evidently even paid for the insurance and the city sticker, or at least once he paid for the city sticker. Things went all right for a while, but a little over a year later, the couple broke up. Before we go further, we must make a drink. I guess you can toast an X with it. (laughs) Anyway, arguably the most famous cocktail in Chicago is one of the most famous cocktails anywhere around the Old Fashioned. However, the Old Fashioned didn't start in Chicago. Legend has it that it started in the early 19th century in New York. A curious reader of the upstate New York newspaper, The Balance, and Columbian Repository, wrote in to ask what the word cocktail meant. The newspaper obliged with a response, describing the cocktail as a mix of alcoholic spirits, sugar, water, and bitters. Before the old-fashioned became the old-fashioned, it's important to note that the term old-fashioned cocktails referred to a general style rather than a specific drink. However, the first recipe for what has become the Old Fashioned was written down in 1895, being termed the Old Fashioned Whiskey Cocktail. The book says, quote, dissolve a small lump of sugar with a little water in a whiskey glass, add two dashes of Angostura bitters, a small piece of ice, a piece of lemon peel, one jigger whiskey, mix with small bar spoon and serve leaving spoon in glass, end quote. So we're going to make the original old-fashioned whiskey cocktail, and imagine we're sitting in a Chicago speakeasy, because we can, okay? And while you already heard the recipe, let's repeat it so that you can actually start mixing up your own. Dissolve a sugar cube in a whiskey glass with a little bit of water. Add two dashes of bitters and a small piece of ice. Then put a piece of lemon peel and one part whiskey in your glass. Mix with a small spoon and then leave the spoon in the glass when you serve it. For the mocktail, do the same steps, except replace the alcoholic whiskey with non-alcoholic whiskey. And bitters do have alcohol in them, but I think for this one, you really need to add it to make it not basically straight fake whiskey. I'll leave it up to you, however. Now that you've toasted an ex, or the fact that that person is an ex, let's get back to our story. So, maybe for revenge, or, well, okay, probably, definitely for revenge, sometime on or before November 17th, 2009, Brandon drove the Purple Monte Carlo, registered in Jennifer's name, to the O'Hare Airport and parked it in an airport parking lot, and never drove it out again. Jennifer may or may not have known what happened to her car, but the car itself remained stranded, as Brandon had parked it in a United Airlines lot, which was a secure lot. Evidently, Brandon was a badged employee for United Airlines, working as an airline parts driver. And this is a problem because? I'm sure you can guess that you can't exactly just park a car in an airport parking lot indefinitely. A month later, in December of 2009, Jennifer started getting notices about the car. Posted signs at the O'Hare lots say that if a vehicle is in a lot for more than 30 days without the lot operators being notified, then the company will attempt to contact the owner. But if the owner cannot be contacted, the vehicle will be towed to another lot before eventually being towed to the city impound lot as an abandoned vehicle. But that's not exactly what happened to the purple Monte Carlo. Instead, the city's airport police just kept ticketing the car. The car racked up ticket after ticket, 678 to be exact, for a variety of infractions. A hazardous dilapidated vehicle, improperly tinted windows, broken headlights, abandoned vehicle, no city sticker, cracked windows, and expired plates. Her lawyer would say, quote, 
The city, acting through its airport police, ticketed the automobile for being abandoned, hazardous, dilapidated, and in the parking lot for over 30 days on 11 etc. ad nauseum to the present, end quote. When she found the first bunch of tickets, Jennifer tried to move the car herself, but she did not have the keys, nor, remember, did she have access to the lot. Jennifer pleaded with Brandon to move the car, and in fact, according to Jennifer's lawyer, on, quote, occasions too numerous to list, Jennifer and members of Jennifer's family have asked Brandon to move the automobile, end quote. When he ignored her pleas, she asked the Chicago Police Department to help her move the car, but they also did not have access to the lot. She then had the Illinois Secretary of State revoke the license plates in September 2010, but the car still received tickets. Jennifer was then told to transfer the registration and title to her ex-boyfriend by a judge to give him the responsibility, a move for which no reason at all, at least according to me, the city deemed inadequate. The car was finally towed on October 26, 2012, a whopping three years after Brandon parked the car in the lot. Because of all those tickets, and because she was unsuccessful in her attempts to move the car, Jennifer was hit, or really smacked in the face, with a fine of more than $105,000, or specifically $105,761.80. She landed straight at the top of the City Department of Revenue's Top 100 Scoflaw list, which is a public shaming list the City of Chicago publishes that identifies those individuals with the greatest amounts of outstanding parking violation debt. Jennifer was also told that she might have her driver's license revoked, and in the meantime, it was suspended. So what's a girl to do who has accumulated enough fines to buy the $600 car 175 times over? Well, she sued. Jennifer filed a lawsuit against Brandon, United Airlines, and the city of Chicago. She argued that she should not be held responsible for the fines, as she was not the owner of the vehicle at the time the tickets were issued and had no control over its whereabouts. I mean, the car was registered in her name, but really, there wasn't anything that she could do since she couldn't physically go and get the car out of the lot. Also, it seems like she tried a lot to make this go away. Jennifer said that United and the city of Chicago should have towed the car and junked it back in November 2009, rather than continuing to ticket it. I, I, she's, she's right. She's definitely right. In a surprising turn of events, the city agreed to drop the $100,000 in ticket fines, leaving Jennifer with a final bill of $4,470. Brandon was required to pay an initial down payment of $1,600, while Jennifer agreed to pay $78 per month until the remaining fine was settled. I feel like she shouldn't have had to pay anything, but whatever. Her lawyer would say, quote, they had a little egg on their face with writing so many tickets on one car. She's very grateful it's all over, end quote. City spokesperson Roderick Drew would say, quote, by following the terms of the settlement at the end of this three-year period, Miss Fitzgerald will be able to resolve the debts, receive her driver's license, which she could not have with all of these tickets hanging over her head, and she can move on with her life, end quote. This settlement marked the end of a lengthy and stressful ordeal for Jennifer Fitzgerald, who, in an act of jilted boyfriend revenge, found herself saddled with the largest parking fine in the city's history, and potentially a world record for the largest parking fine ever. Thanks for hanging out with me. I love that we made the very first old fashioned that we know of for this episode. I'm not saying that I love the cocktail itself, but I love that we went old, old, old school. Next week's drink has two ingredients, beer and lemonade. So uh, you should buy those things and try it. And yes, I said that I don't like beer, but this particular drink has both caper significance and personal significance. So I'm making an exception, a good exception for beer lovers too. I'll see you next week. And remember, there are always alternatives to leaving your ex's car in an airport parking lot to gain your ultimate revenge. <laughs>